Shalom, 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 child of God. I believe you are well. You are keeping safe. Jehovah God is protecting you, is guiding you, and is blessing you also. My name is Onyango Eric. It is my great pleasure to share the word of God with you. I believe you are safe. You are keeping well. Uh, today, I would like to share uh, a word from God. And I gave my title, Which Team Are You? Which team are you? Because there are different teams. Every sport, there is a team. Even athletes, they have a team. They go to represent a nation as a team, or a college, or an institution as a team. Even individual uh, races, they belong to a team. Even uh, sports like golf, players belong to a team. They will say, we belong to this golf club, this particular golf club, because they belong to a team. Nothing of importance can be achieved individually. They say that uh, alone you can go fast, but with group, with people, you will go far. So it is very important to belong to a team. I chose this topic because it is important for people to make a choice. Which team do they belong to? Today I would like to talk about team of God and team of Satan. You know, it's a choice that we make. Uh, I was saying that in a team, there are three levels. There are the management, people who make choices, people who make direction, people who give oversight, people who give policies. Uh, policies. And we also have the, uh, the group that we call the technical team, or the, the coaches and the director, the technical, people who are, who are under technical, and we have the players. In both teams, you realize they have that level of players. And you cannot compete alone because there are people you compete against. And all these teams, there is a goal, there is objective. You can never go to a field without any objective. And objective is automatically to win. No one goes to a battle to draw or to lose. People have the mindset, today we are going to do what? To win. So I chose this topic because it's very relevant in our days. I'm talking about the side of God, the team of God. And I say that level, the team of God is headed by God himself. He is the one who dictates. And we have the technical, we have the Holy Spirit that empowers, that gives direction. And we have us believers as players. In the other team of Satan, Satan is the head. Then he has demons who operate, who perform the technical. And we also have those agents that Satan uses. So it's very important to understand that demarcation so that you know the side that you belong to. I love God because Christian God, you know there are different gods. Everyone believes in his gods. We are living in a society that there are people who believe even animals are God. Sculptures are God. They have different types of God. So I'm talking about being in the side of God. The team of God. God has given people choices. Christianity is about free will. You make a choice. The team you want to belong to. If you want to belong to Satan, God will not stop you. If you want to belong to him, he will embrace you. He will never force you. He will allow you to make independent choice. It's at your own discretion. To belong to any team you desire. And God is the, is the one who installed leaders. So governments also, they prefer to give people free will. In economics, there is what we call uh, how economies operate. Governments, they have their system. And there is that we call free trade, whereby they allow you to do whatever you want. And when people now disgrace, now people start 
having conmanship, when people start to infringe others, manipulate others, have many excesses of power, it's when government comes in to control them. That's when we have control system. But every government wants you to operate in free trade because that is the system of God. He allows you to do whatever you want. And now, when you make wrong choices, you bear the consequences. And when you make the right choices, you also reap the benefits. The team of God. God's team is controlled by the Holy Spirit. And Satan's team is controlled by demonic powers, the rulers of darkness, principalities, and clean spirits take control in the other side. We can never allow ourselves to continue to be uh, what we call fence-sitters. God wants us to make decisions between them of him and them that are against him. Jesus said, them that are for us and there are people who are against us. So there are people who are against us are in the opposite team. Allow us now to go to the scripture because I'd like you to know there are different teams. There are teams of God and there are teams of Satan. You can be playing in a team, you think that you are playing the team of God, but Jesus will tell you, I did not know you. You may say, I perform miracles. I heal the sick. But Jesus will say, I don't know you because you did not belong to his team. You belong to the opposite team. You are performing the roles and the function of other teams. That's why Jesus will not acknowledge you. But when you are in his team, he will tell you, good and faithful servant, come in. So, you better know the team that you are in. You can labor but labor in vain. You can fight and fight in vain. That's why Apostle Paul is saying he's running a race in a way that he will not be disqualified because there are rules and regulations in every championship, in every competition. The team of God is the team that you should ready to go to. Today I will just be mentioning the benefits of being or belonging to God's team. The benefits. Uh, let us first show you how Jesus spoke about this topic. In John chapter 17, let's start from verse 11. Verse 14. Jesus said, I gave them your message. What exactly I'm doing? I gave them your message. I gave them your instruction. I gave them your word. Mm -hmm. When you proceed. And the world hated them. The team of God is hated. The team of God is isolated. The team of God is not that appealing. The team of God. They said... The world hated them because they do not belong to the world. Because they don't belong to that team. Today I wore a jersey so that I may show you it's a Brazilian team. So when you are in the Brazilian team, the Argentine uh, fans will not like you. Because you, did not, you don't belong to the team. When you are in this team, when you are uh, maybe a player of Gormaia, most likely the fans will not like you, the... the the, the fans of Chingwe, FC Lopan, because they are rivals. So you are a different world. The Bible says they do, not, they do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. So our coach is not from this world. Our coach is not from this world, does not play with this system, does not conform to this system. Our system, maybe we play 3-4-4. Four, four. Our, our system is different from their system. So, our coach and us, we don't belong to that team. But others, they operate the same. They have their own system. And when you continue, I do not ask 
you take them out of the world, but I do ask you to keep them safe from the evil one. Just as I do not belong to the world, they do not belong to the world. You know, in theology they say when a word is repeated twice, there is some emphasis. It's called the rule of repetition. There is some emphasis there. So Jesus is affirming that there are people who do not belong to that team of Satan. They belong to his team. They are not of this world. They don't conform to this world. As the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 12, we should not conform to the pattern of this world. But we should be transformed by the renewal of our mind because we are not of this world. We should not conform to those things that happen in this world. As you are speaking now, a lot is bad. There are a lot that is happening today. Cross-dressing everywhere. Homosexuality everywhere. Immorality, sexual immorality has become a norm. A lady just come and says, I've slept with this leader, I've slept with this leader, I've slept with over five leaders. And it is assumed as normal. That is not action of people of the team of God. People are now bragging, I've slept with over 1,000 women. Someone says, a, radio, uh, a uh, music producer, say that he has slept with all female uh, uh, musicians who have come or who have passed through him. And it's normal because that is the practice of that world. Sexual immorality, I'll be showing you what other team does. That's why Jesus says they are not of this world. Just as I am not of this world. The team of God. Team of God that things they cannot do. They cannot have vengeance. They cannot have hatred. They cannot have a dispute. Because they know their father is one. Their father is love. So they radiate love. But the other team, their father is a murderer. That's why they murder. That's why they kill. That's why they destroy. Because their father, John 10.10, 10, their father came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But team of Jesus, they came, Jesus came so that they may have life and life in abundance. When you continue, hmm, dedicate them to yourself by the means of the truth. Dedicate them to yourself by the means of truth. Your word is the truth. So the team of Jesus are dedicated by the truth. They live by the truth. They don't live in hypocrisy. They don't live in a way that they con people. But they live by the truth. That's why Jesus told the Samaritan woman. That when you worship in truth and in spirit. Because the worship of our team Team Jesus is a worship of truth. It's a worship of truth. And they have been dedicated to God by the truth of the word. You can never experience the love of God if you are not ready to hear from Jesus. Side of Satan is a sign of rebellious. Because Satan rebelled from the beginning. Satan rebelled against God. He rebelled against God's authority. He rebelled against God's laws. And now he has recruited his team also to rebel against God. And we can observe people like Korah in Numbers chapter 16. This man rebelled against God. There are people also who rebelled against Moses. Because that team of Satan is of rebellious. They will always rebel against the right doctrine. They will always rebel against the correct uh, norm. They will always rebel. You tell them do this, they will always rebel because their father is a rebellious. What is happening in Sudan is a product of rebellion. Someone does not want to give the leader ample time. He rebels and it's a common practice. People rebelling because their father is a rebellious father. And you need to be very careful not to be surrounded or belong to the team of rebellion because they will always rebel against you. They will never side with you. Hmm. 
this team of rebellious are very very dangerous they can kill you anytime this team of satan they backbite each other they prosecute each other the team of satan but the team of god they love each other they are combined they are joined they are in unison because of love of jesus so the team of jesus is a team that love people when you see a team a player is injured every player will feel for that team because they belong to that team they attribute victory to team they say we are perform well because of our team no one takes the glory because they believe they are in a team but the other team they always want someone to be injured so that i come in they have wrong motives the certain team team of god respect things of god things of god are consecrated vessels of god they respect men of god they respect their coach they respect their their field they cannot go and destroy the props they cannot go and destroy the the stadium they will ensure that stadium is well kept because it is their property they know the owner but the team of satan they don't respect god's consecrated vessel we saw son of king nebuchadnezzar belshazzar he went ahead and took consecrated cup of god they don't respect things of god now they are talking about grabbing some piece of land uh, some churches they say it is prime we need to grab this land because they belong to certain side they don't respect consecrated you know that land was consecrated for god microphone of god consecrated microphones people use those microphone to abuse each other to to settle political scores because they don't respect but consecrated things of god must be respected and when you read the book of deuteronomy chapter uh numbers chapter 18 numbers chapter 18 we will observe there are things that are consecrated for god they are vessel consecrated for god and players know very well their their limit they can never go against god's direction <laughs> when you just read this book you will realize there are things that are consecrated i would have loved to read it but due to time but this uh our numbers chapter 17 the book of numbers chapter 17 numbers chapter 18 sorry i would have loved to read it but you have to know the what is called consecrated things of god all this talk about the same consecrated things of god the lord say to aaron you your son and the levites must suffer the consequences of any guilt connected with the serving in the tent of my presence but only you and your son will suffer the consequences of service in the priesthood bring in your relatives the tribe of levi to work with you and help you while you and your sons are serving at the tent they fulfill their duties to you and their responsibility for the tent but they must not have any contact with sacred object of the holy contact with the sacred objects in the holy place or with the altar so they are things that are consecrated god told moses to tell the children of israel the levites they should not touch consecrated they are consecrated things but the teams of satan they don't respect I was watching Fox News and I saw a female celebrity tearing apart the Bible 
while people are uh, people are applauding, people are clapping the way she's tearing apart Bible, tearing apart. She does not understand that Bible is a consecrated book of God. But because they belong to that team, they don't respect things of God. But when you respect things of God, you will know that God will be pleased with you. And the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. We want to get strength and yet we don't want to respect the giver of the strength. You need financial strength. You need physical strength. You need emotional strength. You can be intellectually strong, but you can be emotionally weak. We have seen people like uh, great scientists, great uh, business people, their marriages collapse because emotionally they are weak. They may have financial muscles, but when you please the Lord, He gives you strength. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The team of Jesus, they depend on Jesus for the strength. One thing that you need to know about the team of Satan, they are ready to fight, oppose anyone of different opinion. When you are in a team, you are told that your enemy is the opposite team. So that team also, they want to attack people who are speaking the truth. When you speak the truth, they will say you are, you are oh, holier than thou. When you say the truth, they say, oh, you are behaving like a Pharisee. When you say the truth, oh, you are what and what. They are ready to attack people who are saying the truth. Because they don't belong to the team of the truth. They say, oh, you have too much theology. Theology is just the study of the word of God. They say, oh, you have what? But that team, they, are, they will always oppose. Because they are there to oppose. They will oppose people of the right doctrine. Uh, these people, the team of Satan, they are driven by their feelings. They are driven by their emotion. They are not driven by God. I will be explaining. Being driven by emotion is what? Why is it that some people mess. Why is it that some people embrace wrong doctrine? It's because they are driven by their emotion. They are not driven by God. They are not controlled by the Holy Spirit. As you are speaking now, there are so many characters in America who are deforming themselves to appear like dragons. They have gone a lot of procedures. Some even, they appear a hundred times. Some even, they, they go for some funny ways because they are driven by the emotion emotion tells them that i'm not sufficient enough to be human i just have to disfigure myself to appear like monkey to appear like cat to appear like dog to even some like dragon because they are driven by the emotion the bible says that god is not author of confusion god created a man god created you and make the difference between you and animal but there's someone who wants to appear like animal because it's driven by emotion. His or her emotion dictate that you are not good to be human. I saw a video, even there is a woman who walks like, like animal so many years because in her mind she believes that she's not human. She is an animal. I've seen so many men who want to appear different. I've seen some wedding. People marrying animals, dolphins, dogs, cats, lizards. Because they are driven by emotion. Emotion tells them you are, your emotional feelings are well catered for by this animal. That team, they do very funny things. Someone believed that he is a man, but he was created in a wrong body. Because his feelings tell her. That way, you are a man, so you have to dress like a woman, you have to behave like a woman because your feelings tell you that way. You need to be driven by God. Other team, someone believes that 
I am a man, but I need to be a woman. So she goes ahead and being go to be married. Someone believes that I need to be married. I'll be talking one day about toxic masculinity. It's demonic agenda that is happening around the world. That men are being told when you are you are you you don't uh, apply those cream, you don't do ma uh, pedicure and manicure. You are toxic. When a man cannot cry, when a man cannot babysit, when a man cannot do uh, feminine function, then you are toxic. Yet the Bible has position. The other team, they oppose God. Whatever God's order, they want to go against because they are not of the team of God. I told you Jesus said they are not of this world. People of God respect. If you are a man in the team of God, you will love your wife. And will give your love to her alone. But when you are in the other team, you will feel that your wife is not that beautiful. You will want to misbehave because that team allows for that. Provide a platform for that. God said, let me just read about emotion. Because what is happening in the world today, we need to be in God's team. Because people are driven by emotion. Tomorrow your child is still a boy child. We tell you that I am a girl. Driven by emotion. Not having what we call conscious. They don't have that uh, ability to detect. This is demonic powers. Satan has come with different schemes. Even in schools. A child believes that it's not a boy, it's not a girl. There is agenda that is being mentioned in America, of a child not being a boy and not being a girl. Not transgender. There is another one. Being driven by emotion. The other team, they are driven by emotion. But the team of Jesus, they are driven by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit dictates the action. The action. I love this. And you have to appreciate God. Because God provide an avenue. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 1, the Bible says, I thought long and hard about all these things, and saw that God controlled the action of the wise and the righteous people, even their love and their hate. God controlled the emotion of the righteous. So the team of God, they are controlled by God. Even now they love, even now they hate. Who to love? They are controlled by God, and God can never Tell you to love your fellow man because it's abomination before God. God will never tell you to sleep with an animal. It's happening in America. It's happening in London. It's happening in Brazil. God will never tell you that because God will control your love to your opposite gender. God control the emotion of the Russians. He control the emotion of the Russians. The team of God, they depend on God's direction. They don't just move blindly. That's why David inquired of the Lord, because he was being controlled by God. The team of God, they take instruction from God. But the team of Satan, they take instruction for demons. Who tells them that now you have to hate someone, you have to kill someone for you to be wealthy, for you to be famous. The team of Satan, they believe that they must harm for them to be promoted. But the team of God, they do good and God rewards. Because the Bible says we should not be tired of doing good because we shall reap in due time. You'll find people, they even do very dangerous stuff because their emotion has told them that way. Emotion has told them that you are not beautiful enough. You have to do some plastic surgeries. You have to do some procedures that bring cancer to yourself because your emotion has driven you. Yet God says you are beautiful and wonderfully made, but still you don't consider yourself beautiful because Satan has come and took you from that team of God and recruited you in his team that believe that I'm not sufficient. Hmm. 
team of Satan opposes God. God, what is happening now, technologically, there are people who have come up to try to, co to compete with God, creating humans in form of robots, having systems that they have become so as others that they have now decided to pause for six months. They are brought systems that are very, they even, they are moving very fast to be controlled. They want to put some safety measures because of their work. They are opposing God. They have come up with a religion called Scientology that believe in science. They want to oppose God's ideas. Team of Satan will oppose God. God is the creator. He placed in a man wisdom. He created in a man innovation. But they want to oppose the sovereignty of God. They want to oppose the powers of God. They want to oppose the creativity of God. And God will never allow. That's why there's a team of international uh, tech gurus. They have now started writing letters saying that let us stop with this uh, is called uh, artificial intelligence. Let us take a pause for six months. Elon Musk, name them. They have decided now to pause because they were trying to oppose God by creating humans. And these humans, they have become problematic even for them to understand. They are saying let us pause for six months. It's because team of Satan will always oppose God. God said, don't do this. And Satan began from the Garden of Eden. God says, don't do this. But Satan tells them, go ahead and do it. Did God tell, he told you not to eat this fruit? Satan will always oppose God's instruction. Now, there is what we call chat GBT. And it's bringing a lot of bad effects. There are people who are even they are committing suicide by chatting with this program. That even the innovators have said, let us pause for now. You cannot oppose God. The team of Satan will always oppose God. So when you are opposing God, know that you belong to Satan's team. When you are opposing the Bible, when you are opposing things of God, when things of God no longer make sense to you, know that you are in that team. That's why Apostle Paul says that he's not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of salvation to everyone. The message of the cross is foolishness to them that are perishing, but to us it's the power of God. The message of the cross, when you, the message of the cross is no longer powerful to you, know that you belong to satanic side. When the side of Satan attracts you, when the story you want is of liquor, when the story you want to hear is of uh, pornography, when the story you want to hear is of the strippers, the story you want to hear is of homosexuality, know that you belong to another team because them they are perishing. They are perishing because the team of God must win. The team of God is for the victors. Because Jesus said he defeated the world. And in him we are also conquerors. The team. People are committing suicide because of this program. That even the innovators have said let us pause for six months. The team of Satan will oppose God. The team of Satan believe in human doctrine. The team of Satan believe in human teachings. The team of Satan believe in human ideologies. The team of Satan rely on the things of human knowledge. But the team of Jesus believe in the word. That's why I read that book of John 17. The Bible said they are dedicated by the truth, the word of the truth. So the team of God, they believe in the word. Whatever is not related to the word. The Bible talks about life. 
and you now you choose death. Know that it's no longer the work of God. That is the team of Satan. Because Satan kills. So when someone tells you about death, know that he is an agent of Satan. Jesus himself hated until he was referred as a glutton. Someone is telling you for you to see Jesus. You have to die. You have to starve to death for you to see Jesus. Yet Jesus himself, he was eating until he was branded a glutton. Then they can never starve like the way they are telling you to starve. I, I had a topic about modern Pharisees. They tell you what they cannot do. They tell you to fast. They cannot fast. They are quick to tell you about evangelism. They can never even evangelize to their neighbors. They can never tell you what they are telling you what they cannot do. Matthew 23. Jesus talks about the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. And they are there nowadays. Workers of iniquities. The team of Satan. Team of God believe that all things are possible. Teams of God, when you belong to team of God, no team is unbeatable. No team can defeat you because you have the Jehovah God, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the lamp of God, who defeated the Satan and all his agents. He will make you victorious. The side of God believe in family. The side of God believe in family. Even Apostle Paul was telling people to run away from the religion that tells you don't marry. Because God believe in families. Every apostle talked about family. How family should live. How family should thrive. How marriage should uh, exist. In a godly concept. There is position of family in God's team. You need your family. You need your family. Anyone who is telling you to leave your wife, to leave your husband, and go to a forest, know that that one is in Satan's team. If Apostle Paul is complaining, am I not should I not or am I not acceptable? To also minister with my wife like other apostles. Apostle Paul himself is grumbling. Because apostles were with their wives side by side. Their families, Crispus, Cornelius, and so many. In fact, the Old Testament, the New Testament ministry, bulk of it was in houses. Because God value families. God value families. When you, Apostle Paul is greeting, passing his regards to churches that are meeting in people's houses, what do you understand? But someone is telling you, leave your wife and come to the forest. Leave your husband and come to your forest. That one is Satan's team. But God's team, they embrace as a family. That's why it is about me and my family. Joshua says, me and my family, we shall serve the Lord. God was using families, sons of Aaron, sons of Eli, because God valued families. He has talked almost all their episodes. There is position of family. There is instruction for marital bliss. But someone is telling you, leave your wife, leave your husband. That one is not the team of God. That one is team of Satan. Team of God instill godly values to their children. I was watching a video in America. So many teens, they, I don't know how they conspired and formed a team. So many youths, they just came out in the street and they were destroying everything, petrol station, supermarket, everything. A good number of, of, of teens. Why? Because they are not trained well on the ways of the Lord. The book of, uh, I think Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6, the Bible tells us about train the children in the way they should go. 
and they will not depart. So these things, they don't have God in them. They are taught, they are given, their mind is full of wrong teachings, violence. Their mind is full of rage. Their mind is full of wickedness. That's why they go out and they cause havoc in the city. But the team of God ensure that they train the children in godly ways. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 6. Hallelujah. The Bible says, never forget this command that I'm giving you today. The team of God, they have instruction. They are following the teachings and instruction to the letter. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 6. Never forget this command that I'm giving you today. Teach them to your children. Repeat them when you are at home and when you are away, when you are resting and when you work. You are working. Tie them on your arms. Wear them on your forehead. As a reminder, write them on the doorstep of your house and on your gates. These teachings of God, we need to teach our children. Let children know about God. We teach them at home. We teach them at work. We teach them wherever we are. We ensure that we teach our children. children nowadays, youths are very rebellious because of what they are taught. When you look at cows, there are some milk that when we purchase, they have some smell. And those smell is a result of what they consume. When they consume a greener pasture, their milk will not have those scents. But when they consume everything and anything that they get, plastic bags, cement bags, everything, dust, tomato, rotten, rotten carrots, rotten cabbage, those milk must smell. Why? Because that is the product of what they have consumed. The same way when we feed our children with godly values, they will, be, they will grow knowing those values and it will take them in the right direction. What was happening in America can happen easily in Kenya. Yesterday I saw some news, not yesterday, but this week. Some small, I think they are teenagers, smoking bang, very tender age. Why? They don't have God in them. Because if they had God in them, God would have controlled them. Would have told them this is not the right thing for them to do. Team of God. Teaches children how they should live. Teams of God ensure that their kids live well. But teams that does not respect God, they do whatever they want. You have to know one thing. Teams of God love. Team of God believe in the gospel. Team of God believe in sharing. Team of God believe in charity. Team of God believe in prayer. Because prayer is what motivates and dictates the life of people that belongs to God. Hmm. Now allow me to tell you the benefits and the loss of being in either team. When you are on God's team, there are benefits that you will get. I remember I had a topic about importance of monthly declarations. And all those benefits in the autonomy 28, you will get them when you are in God's team. Because God's team is a team of serving God. God's team is a team of people who worship God. When you worship God, there are a lot of benefits. Deuteronomy 28, you can read it in your convenient time. Deuteronomy 28. You shall get what God wants you to get. 
28, the benefits, advantage and disadvantage of belonging to God's team or Satan's team. The choice is yours. When you are in God's team, you will not suffer the same fate of unbeliever. You will not suffer the same fate of unbeliever when God's team. And this one, I've, it has been my desire to read for you for long. I believe that God makes things to work out in their right time. It's not chapter Chapter 65, verse 17, the Lord says, I'm making a new earth and a new heaven. The events of the past will be completely forgotten. So the team of God is a brand new team, not a team that keep record of wrong, not a team that old grudges. It's a team of new beginning. Verse 18, be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. The new Jerusalem I will make full joy and the people will be happy. So the team of God will be happy in the midst of turbulence, in the midst of harsh economic times. The team of God will be happy. You know there are teams that, community teams in Kenya, even if a team is on top of the table, still the players are not happy because you'll find they are not paid their salaries. But there are teams that are team from corporate. This team, even they are, when they are bottom of the table, players will get their pay. Why? Because their welfare is well catered for. The same way when you're in the team of God, God ensures you take care of your happiness. That's why the Bible says, we shall not want. David says, he shall not want. Because God is his shepherd. And Jesus affirmed it when he said, I am a good shepherd. He ensured that he take good care of you. When we are in team of God, God take care of you. God take care of your children. God take care of your rent. God take care of your school fees. God take care of your well-being. God take care of your projects. Because he ensure you are happy and you are joyous. There will be no weeping, no calling for help. When in God's team, there is no weeping. There is no weeping because God gives you the right instruction that will never cause you to suffer. Babies will no longer die in infants and the people will live out of their lifespan. God will ensure that their babies live their full age. But the team of Satan, their children will die in infancy. They will die as toddlers. The people will live out their full lifespan. People of God live until people say these people they don't age. Because God is the one who renew. The Bible says he renew their strength. The Bible says he ensure that he rejuvenate them. They are like uh, tree planted by the rivers. 
They are always evergreen. The people of God, you will see some people, some archbishops, some bishops, you will have them when you are a baby. Until now, they stand tall. Why? Because God rejuvenates his people. People, they, because God ensures, he gives them the right nutrients. God ensures that they have balanced diet for them to have long life. And this one, look at Moses. Moses, the Bible says, he lived 120 years. His eyes were not dim. His strength was still with him. 120 years because God was renewing. Team of God. God renews. God rejuvenates. God ensures that a person stay firm. People will build their houses and live in them themselves. They will not be used by someone else. I love God. You can read it there by yourself. It says 66, 65 verse 17. And you will observe what God has said. When you are in certain side, the end is disastrous. Suicide is so common nowadays because people, they belong to certain steam. Certain team comes with desperation. Certain steam come with regrets. You must regret when you are in certain steam. But when you are in God's team, you must rejoice. There is a lot of happiness when you are in God's side. When you are in certain steam, you will be banished. The Bible says outside there are dogs. You will not see the kingdom of God when you are in certain side. Certain side. When we read the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, we shall know people who play in the team of Satan. They can never, because every team, when we win, we rejoice. The other team is left crying because everyone wants to win. There is always number one. There will never be number two. Always number one. Gold must go to someone. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Uh, I believe verse 11. Verse 9. The Bible says, surely you know that the wicked will not possess God's kingdom. Don't fool yourself. People who are immoral who worship idol, who are adulterers, who are homosexual perverts, or who steal, or who are greedy, or who are drunkard, or who are slanderers, who slander others, or who are thieves, none of these will possess the kingdom of God. So these are the players. When you are homosexual, when you are adulterer, when you are greedy, when you are a thief, know that you have no place in the kingdom of God. When you are midfielder of this team, when you are a winger of Satan's team, know that you will not enjoy celebration that, will, that this team of God will be subjected to because they endured. The people, the other team, they are always about themselves. It's about being served. But the team of Jesus the team of God is about serving. That's why Jesus came to serve. So when you don't want to serve, know that you belong automatically to Satan's team. But when you are ready to serve people, know that you are in the right team of God. When you enjoy serving people, know that you, are, you have your number in the team of God. You are in the squad of God. When you feel that Serving is part of you. Don't struggle to serve. Know that you are in the right team of God. But when it's about you being served, you are about being served. Everywhere you want just to be served. Know that you belong to satanic team. You are in his team. Family in that team. And he will deal with you thoroughly. Hmm. We have seen musicians. 
Secular musicians, good number of them have committed suicide. Why? Because that team that they were promulgating the agendas has nothing good for them. We we'll leave them dry. We we'll leave them depressed. That's why they commit suicide. That's why they get bipolar. Because that team that is no joy. But the team of God, the Bible says he came to give us joy. Him is peace. The peace he will give you. You get little, but you are contented. There are people who are billionaires. They have endorsements. I'm talking about people like uh, uh, this man, the Asba, Kanye West. Someone suffered from bipolar, yet he had everything. What agenda? He was mocking God. And we have seen people who are mocking God. Their end out is very much disastrous. That team, there is nothing good. Their end is always hard, bad. But when you are in team of God, you are end, people will rejoice. People rejoice about the Rubabel. People rejoice about Nehemiah. People rejoice. And whatever you do, when you are in the team of God, people will rejoice. Because win is a team win. When we go to heaven, we shall rejoice. The Bible says we will wipe out all our tears. I love God. I serve God because God cares for us. He cares for his team. He will never allow you to suffer for long. He will never allow you to go down. The Bible says you may fall seven times, but still he will give you strength to continue. David loved God, and he enjoyed when you love God, God will preserve your generation. Your name will not be blotted out of this world. People will remember you existed when you are in the team of God because you are a winner. This topic just needs a day about the team. But by the grace of God, allow us just to complete with the last verse. Revelation chapter 3 verse 14. I just want to talk about a church. Why? You need to be in God's side. Why? If you have not made a choice, if you are just a bystander, if you are just a fence-sitter, I would like to invite you to join God's team. Because God will spit you out when you are in Satan's team. God wants you to be in his team. Revelation chapter 3 verse 14 To the angel the church of Laodicea write This message from the Amen The faithful and the true witness who, was, who is the original of all that God has created I know that you have done I know what you have done I know you are neither cold nor hot I wish you are either one of the other This church of Laodicea represents our churches today represent our society today. He's telling this church, it is important to make a choice. You either be in God's side or Satan's side. This issue of being hot or cold, it is what is causing the church to lose its power, its mojo. Christianity is in decline because of having lukewarm believers. Someone is today in secular, tomorrow is in gospel. Them that are in gospel, they are very much in secular, but in hiding. So, Kenya is a Christian nation, yet our habit, our drinking habit is just skyrocketing. People are more drunkards in Kenya. In fact, majority who drink in silence are more than people drink in day broad light. People drink because 
is a composition of lukewarm believers. I wish you are either one or the other. But because you are lukewarm, neither hot or cold, I'm going to spit you out my mouth. God is going to spit you. When you are in either team, God is going to spit you. We don't remember a light man. We don't remember a referee. Because they are neutral. But we remember this team that won. We remember the top scorer. We remember the person who will be given uh, golden gloves. We remember the winner. But we don't remember the last man. Because they are, they are just in between. When you got, but you do not know the miserable, how miserable and beautiful you are. You are poor and naked and blind. People in the other team, team of Satan, they are poor, naked and blind. They don't know they are wrong. They don't know they are disgracing. They don't know they are violating God's law. They are blind. They are theologically illiterate. I advise you then to buy gold from me, pure gold, in order to be rich. Buy also white cloth to dress yourself and cover up your shameful kindness. When the Bible talks about clothing, means behavior. People of the other team, their behavior is thinking. But people who are on the side of God, they have white linen and they are crowned with gold. Buy some ornament to put on your eyes so that you may see. They are blind. They don't know what they are doing. Nowadays, Sometimes I hear radio and the story that emanates is just mind-boggling. A lady says, my father-in-law want to sleep with me. There are so many women who come up and say, oh, I find my mom with my husband in bed. They're, those people, they are blinded. They don't know their, their, their boundaries. They are blind because they belong to their, that team. Team that embrace homosexuality and sexual immorality. The other team, they are shameful and naked. I rebuke and punish all whom I love. Be earnestly then and turn from your sins. Listen, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and eat with him and they will eat with me. To those who win the victory, I will give them the right to sit beside me on my throne. Just as I have been victorious, and now sit by my father on his throne. What a promise. What a beauty. To sit besides God. To enjoy because you have won a battle. Because God is opening the door today. Jesus is knocking. Revelation chapter 3. Verse 20. Jesus is knocking. It's now like those scouts he wants to recruit you to his team he's knocking at the door telling you come we'd like to sign you we'd like you to be our player don't harden your heart soften your heart and accept to be in god's team and you will get victory you will get power you will get whatever you want because god is the owner of everything on this earth Gold and silver belongs to him. So Jesus is knocking at your door. Open for him so that he may come in, dine with you, and give you victory, which he has said he will give you victory. It is a great moment to accept him, to accept his team, so that you may have his jersey, so that you may have a position in his team, so that you may enjoy the victory. There are people who accept to go to another team that will guarantee them victory. People shift allegiance from this team to this team, Barcelona to Real Madrid, Manchester to Arsenal, Arsenal to Chelsea, a team that will guarantee them victory. 
you can also make a choice. A team that will guarantee you victory. Team Jesus. I take this golden opportunity to invite you to join Jesus' team, to experience his victory. Let us believe and pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, King of glory, we pray and we trust in you. We pray, Father, as we enjoy you, Almighty Father, in your team, may you continue to fight for us. Give us wisdom and knowledge, Almighty Father. Help us, O Jehovah, to walk in truth and in spirit, O Jehovah. You are the great I am, your sovereign God, the everlasting King. There is none like you, Almighty Father. Stretch forth your hands of our lives. We, protect, we commit our family, son, to you. Father, may you protect us and guide us. Give us, Almighty Father, favor. In the mighty name of Jesus, pray, believing and trusting. Amen. Thank you very much for your time. I believe that you have learned something. I believe that you are, go you are in God's team. If you have not joined God's team, I'll be giving you instruction. You can write to me. Uh, you can write just you want to join God's team. And I will guide you. Or now you can join God's team. Drop a text in that YouTube comment section. Just tell me that you want to join God's team. And I will direct you accordingly. My YouTube channel is E-R-I-C-K, Sublime, S-U-B-L-I-M-E, Eric Sublime, Eric of C-K. Eric Sublime, drop a text, tell me you want to join God's team, and I will direct you. It will be my much joy to direct you. Kindly like, comment, and subscribe so that you get the first opportunity to view the latest video that we are releasing and God will bless you. Uh, I would like to invite you to stand with us. Your love offering is highly appreciated. I like those who are doing it, and I believe that you will also partake in God's blessing, the blessings of the giver. There is a blessing of a giver. Some of you, God just wants you to be in his team. You open your doors. And the people of God in that team, they give. They don't mind. You don't have a socks, I give. You don't have a pad, I give. You don't have this, I give. We are, we are a team. You don't have fair, I give. Because that is the principles of the team of God. So you can be a blessing to this team by standing with us. You can send your love offering in Mpesa. Mpesa number 0725-102-528. 0725-102-528. It will be a great pleasure to pay us a visit. We are situated at Mukuru Kwareli Market, adjacent to Donom Railway Station. There is a market there with the green gate. By National Serial Board, just proceed to that gate. Room number 245. Room number 245. If you have any prayer item, you need guiding and counseling. You need theological uh, interpretation. You are highly welcome. And God will do you good. You can text me. You can give me a call. Number the same. 0725-102-528. And God will bless you abundantly. 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 I love with the love of Christ. My name remains Onyango Eric. See you next time. God be with you, God protect you, cause his faith to shine upon you, be gracious to you, and protect you. I love you, I love you, I love you. Bye-bye.